she she but she got she she got yeah and we had three telegraph boys you see it's a telegraph office and she got all the telegrams coming in for the, for the district and and send them out to i've worked it she was, yeah go on she used to say how old were you when when they had that oh and I, yes i was i was working so i was about 16 mm. i suppose we had three telegraph boys and they had a room we lived upstairs and they had a room upstairs big back room whether they had have certain things they had to have a fire they had to have a table and chairs and um, uh, access to the loo and, and wash you know certain things laid down and they wore uniforms I don't suppose you remember the uni telegraph boys like a postman in a way they had bikes Right, can we start this afternoon by talking about school? What was your first school? Well, the first yes, my first school was called Buller Road School. Um, it was just within walking distance, and I used to go with some. I don't know whether they were parents, as I can't even remember. And I can remember just sort of sitting there and uh, doing some drawings, and you know, it was all sort of. But then I was only barely five. Uh, and I stayed there until I was about seven. Then when I was seven, I was eligible to... Uh, I went to uh, Bronsbury and Kilburn High School then, with which they had to pay my parents, which was further away. But um, it was a very... It was quite a nice school. Can you remember your first day? Not really. I don't think I, I was always... I never liked school, so I was always a bit nervous. But I remember I was very happy. I was happy there. Um, I was never academic, but I was always very good at sports, and and I was eventually captain of the rounders team. So you know that sort of made me sort of you know at least I wasn't noted for me academic, but I was noted for me, for me sports prowess and things. Yeah, I was. Did and you, I was. Did you look forward to going to school? I did. That's that school. Quite look forward to. It. Yeah, I did. Yeah. Yes. And I think I might have done fairly. You know, been a fairly. But you see, we um, we moved, we moved uh, down to Seaford, because, uh, as I said, I think before they got in with this. Mrs. Cunningham that ran this boarding house, and she went. They went in as partners. At least my mother, and she thought it would be a great asset to have my mother. They know one another for some years because my mother could play for, for the guests in the lounge and things like that, you know. But but my poor mother was. It didn't work out. I mean, she. She. You know, it wasn't my mother's cup of tea, really. She, she and this woman was a, a, a dictatorial sort of woman, you know. I don't think my mother was happy, really. Thinking of, of Buller Road, what, can you remember any of the subjects that you did? No. No, oh, I think, yes, I can remember sort of, yes, A, B, C and all the basics, and I can remember chanting tables and doing little sums and drawing, you know, really primary, very primary school sort of business and sitting on a, a bench, you know, and, and things, yeah. Friends? I think I had some little friends there, and I can't remember any of them. can't remember any of them. Did your parents hear your reading at home? Not that I remember, no. I don't remember, I don't think so. And how long were you there? At Buller Road, about, well, but barely a couple of years, you see, and then I started at Bronze and Kilburn House, you know, and um, wore a uniform, you know. And so you didn't wear a uniform at Buller Road? No, no, no. And you were no. there from about five till seven? Barely five, about mm, seven. Mm. And what was the second school? Uh, well, then we moved to Seaford, <clears throat> when we were there for about a year, 18 months, and I went to a convent school there. Uh, which I didn't like a bit. Why? Well, it was totally different, you see. A, a high school, an ordinary high school, and then you went into a convent school. <laughs> I 
I didn't like it and, and uh, lessons were all different and that's why I've never got beyond fractions in mathematics I think because I, I never sort of cottoned on really no. but, but why didn't you like it? Well, I think I'd made, see, seven, I was about ten, I suppose, when I left Brunswick, Kilburn Husk, and I'd made friends and sort of settled in, and this was totally alien. I didn't know anybody. I didn't know a soul there that went there, you see, it's, you know, Seaford and that, and, and I did, it was alien country. Absolutely strange, and it's difficult for a child to, yeah, I didn't. I can remember I had to walk across a cornfield to get there and back, and uh, I didn't really like it, no. Friends? don't think I made many friends there. This woman that my mother in this boarding house, she had a daughter called Marcia, about my age, So, but she didn't go, see, she went to an ordinary unpaid school. But we were fairly friendly, yeah, we used to play together after school and things like that. Hmm. How did you get to Buller Road when you went there? Oh, it just was, wasn't far. Just from where the post office was, where my mother and father it was just down the road. Just it wasn't far at all, like from here to perhaps the corner. Mm. And at Buller Road, what did you do about lunch? I think I came. I think I came home mm. to the post office. Mm. And what about after school? Well, after school, I'd have to go back to the post. You see, my my grandma lived upstairs. So I mean, I could always, I always was up there, you know, and I could get my books out, fiddle around, and and talk to her, and play the piano, or practice, and, you know, and things like that. Yeah, yeah. And then go back. What happened after? Well, then when they shut the post office up, then we used to go home to the flat we had, get something to eat, go to bed. Well, I did. And what did you wear when you went to the second school? What the convent school? Mm. I can't. I can't remember any uniform there. I can't remember any uniform there. There may have been, but I can remember the Brunswick Kilburn uniform very well. But I can't remember that one. So maybe there wasn't. And then we came back to London. So how long were you at the second school? The well, about eighteen school? months, I suppose. And then you went to the convent when you came back from London? Then went, yeah, then I went to a convent in the next um, district at Halsden. And then that's when I had bicycle because I used to cycle there and back. It was fair way, fair way, too far, well, too far to walk really. And uh, that was a big convent, big grounds. And oh, I didn't mind that, you know, we, we had quite a bit of fun there and used to house up the, up, up the nuns. And, yeah. and how long were you there? Until I was about 14. It's quite some time. Mm. Then my father got this job up at Hull and we moved up to Hull and I wouldn't go to school. I was eligible to leave at 14 and I didn't, they wanted me, but I didn't want to. So that was your last school? Mm. So after that, they said, well, watch it, you know. So I learned short, you know, went to commercial, you know, shorthand typing. And are there any teachers that stand out in your mind? Oh, there are at the last, yeah. At the, yes, at the, yes. Um, at the, um, the Brunsbury and Kilburn High School, I was, I had, uh, I was always very, with that, with the sports mistress, see, because I was very, you know, captain, you know, and I thought, oh, I'd love to have a job like her. I always wanted to be a gym mistress. I'd love to have a job like hers. And uh, I can't remember any of the other teachers there, though. But I can at the at the last convent I went to. Oh yeah. Yes, we had a. You know, some were nuns. Some were, you know. And the one that taught us history, Miss Larry. Irish Catholic, of course, which I realise now. Oh, she was the most sarcastic, so and so. Oh, she was so sarcastic. I remember her, you know. And Miss O'Gorman, another Irish, you see, convent. 
She taught us geography. <laughs> she was the untidiest thing you ever saw. She used to have long hair, you know, it was always sticking out everywhere. And she always had a slip shown or a hem down or, or so she sort of threw her clothes on. <laughs> I always remember that. It's funny, isn't it? And then, um, and the nuns, we used to make, you know, we were about 12, 13, and they used to make terrible fun of the nuns, you know. How? Well, I say, you know. We had a music man for singing. I forgot, Professor somebody. And we used to have to go down to the big assembly hall for, music, for singing lessons. And there was this grand piano, and he had a, you know, but a nun always sat at the side, you see, while we were having this lesson. And we used to say, Oh, mm, you know, she looked looked at him, mm, you know. God wouldn't have him bake, could you? Mm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So so were there any teachers you had a special affinity with? No. No, not really. No we no, see in those days you didn't really get to know not it's not like now I don't think like you didn't I mean those parents and, and all that parents and teachers and all that there wasn't anything like that in my day love no not really I suppose the parents could have gone to the school and seen the teacher but I don't know you had your reports at the end of the term and uh, you know I suppose I don't think my parents ever made a wave no no and what subjects did you like best Gym and sports. <laughs> I liked English. I, I was quite good at writing essays. Yeah. Hopeless at mathematics. I liked. I liked history and I liked yes, I liked history and geography. Quite like those. Yeah, yeah. French, I well, so so, you know. Mm. But it wasn't inspiring teaching like it is today, love. Like. You know, you realise now it was t you learnt history, but what did you learn? Dates, didn't you? As long as you could reel up a string of dates from 1066 upwards, you passed whatever it was. You know. And what about subjects you particularly disliked? Obviously, mathematics. Maths. I dreaded mental arithmetic. I could never do it. Long division, fractions, could never do them. And I, oh, I yes, I used to make yeah. I used to be very upset about my homework. I couldn't do my mass homework. And um, my mother didn't have a clue. My father didn't have a clue. He didn't have a clue about fractions or decimals. Or, no. Although my father could have a, add up a great line of figures, quick. But he couldn't, <laughs> you know. Uh, but... Um, so what used to happen then? Well, what happened was uh, we knew a, 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 a chappy, well, he was a good bit older than me. Um, I suppose he was about, well, he was just leaving school, actually, so he must have been probably about 60-something. And he used to come and help me try and explain it. But, I mean, it fell on deaf ears, love. I never did. Got none at all to it. Never have done. And then what happened when you went back to school with with no homework or wrong? Well, I struggled, but, but you got, yeah. I, I sort of struggled through it and got a few right, it, according to what he told me to put sort of thing, but didn't really understand what I was doing, no. No. Never got good reports. Never got bad reports that she, you know, but I never got good reports, really. Usually she could do better or something like that. I oh, know I wasn't at all good in brains at school, not a bit. What was your parents' reaction to your reports? Don't think, don't think they worried all that much, really. Like, I mean, I don't know what ambitions they had for me, but uh, 
they certainly they certainly didn't push me to be academic or anything like that no they didn't push me what no 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 and and what did you want to be a gym mistress mm. Mm. but it was a long expensive training in those days and that was just don't know they couldn't ever have done that so, so that was that What was the form of discipline at school? Oh, well, lines and staying in, mostly. Did you get these often? Yes, yeah, sometimes. Maybe it was talking in class or, or being too noisy or something like that. You know, no, no more than... No, I wasn't terribly badly punished really. No, I remember having to stay in once or twice and and having lines to do sometimes, but not terribly, no. I wasn't the worst girl in the class, I don't think. <laughs> what about play times? What did you do at play times? Mostly played netball, practiced our netball and um Ate a bit of lunch, whatever it was, you know. Mm. Because after I left the Bronzeville Kilburn High School, I never played rounders again. You see, it was netball after that at this other convent. So we used to practice our netball, shooting, and things like that. Mm. Did you still go home for lunch? Nearly every day I did. If, yeah, if the weather was, if it was terrible weather, I didn't because, you know, you on a bike you'd arrive home wet and you'd have to go back. But uh, unless it was terrible weather or thick snow or ice and that, I did. But if I didn't, I took sandwiches and... Mm. But what did you have in the sandwiches? Um, probably cold meat, hard-boiled egg, cheese, mm. and uh, perhaps an apple or something like that, you know, a bit of chocolate, perhaps. Who prepared that? My dad, I expect. <laughs> so, what what would your overall assessment of your schooling have been? Do you think it was useful to you? No. Oh, well, it must have been, Heather. I learned to read and write, love, didn't I? <laughs> but, I mean... As for learning, I didn't know. I've learned far more since I've left school than I ever did at school. Through reading and things like that. And how old were you when you left school? Fourteen. Did your parents want you to stay on? They know, yeah. When we moved to Hull, they wanted me to start, you know, and I, I was flatly refused. So I went to this, you know, shorthand type commercial college place, that, which they had to pay for, of course, and learned shorthand typing and, and, and uh, office, you know, filing and all that sort of thing. Yeah. So tell me what precipitated the move to Hull. Well, my father got a job through his, his brother, I think, in a, a hotel in, in Hull. And he was in, they had a big snack bar in the bar, big snack counter. And he used to, um, he ran that, you see, saw that it was, you know, they had cold meats and they did sandwiches and, you know, for the, and pickled onions, you know, for the business, businessmen. It was in the middle of how businessmen used to go in there and they had all these stools and tables and they'd have a drink and, and then they'd have a sandwich or cheese and pickled onion or perhaps a pie or whatever it was and he had to see he was the sort of he managed that to see that every you know there and running and, and the sandwiches were right and, and all this and that and how did he get that job i think he got it through his brother who was in the hotel line. yeah i think so but then after about a couple of years uh, they gave that up so he got the push they amalgamated or they can't remember, but he got the push. 
So back we had <laughs> to come to London. And during the time we were in home, my mother didn't work, you see. She was home from the only time I can ever remember in all my life, she was home. She never worked. So you would have moved to Hull when you were? 14. 14 in about 1925. Mm -hmm. then. And, and you moved from the, the flat where you were born? No. No, because we left that when we went to Seaford. Right. And where did you live when you came back from? Well, we got another flat further, you know, up the road in the same district, but uh, not the same flat lot, no. Were you distressed at moving from the original flat? Yes, I don't think I like moving. I didn't, well, you know, you, didn't, you don't, didn't want to leave your friends and your old Children are very much for the familiar, aren't they? You know, and uh, yeah, no, I don't think it did me any good moving around, really. But, but then on the other hand, it probably did because it broadened, you know, it, it, I saw other things and and I saw Yorkshire a bit and, you know, and lived in Hull and had that experience. And Where did you live when you lived in Seaford? Lived in the sporting house, love. Yes, yeah, a big, big house, a big house, and she used to take summer visitors, you know. And uh, we had a, my mother and I had a room, and my father used to come down with mostly weekends. But it wasn't, you know, I don't think my mother wasn't happy then, no. And then when you moved back to London, where did you live? When we moved back to London, we went. We, we went into another flat, you see. Mm. Tell me about that one. Well, it was very similar to the one where I was born, really. Front room, bedroom, scullery and kitchen at the back, you know, it was about the same, pretty well the same. What sort of neighbourhood? Opposite a big board school. <laughs> big, yeah. Oh, quite, quite a reasonable neighbourhood, like, yeah. Oh yes, we never lived in slummy, they were never slummy. No, middle class, you know. Mm. Where did you go and play when you lived there? Um, well, mostly on a Saturday. You see, that's a funny thing. My friends and that were, were, didn't go to my convent school. So I used to go over to their playground in the board school play when we used to play netball. We used to you know, practice our netball, and play. but I never went to that school, you know. Yeah, it was, you know, but there you are. I would have been much better for me if I had, I think. Did you ever ask if you could? Yes, I think I did. But no, no, Dad, you know, no, you, you could be obstinate, my father, you know. <laughs> I'll see how they done his mind and that. But it, they couldn't have done it if they'd had any more children. Really. I mean, the fact that the, the, the fees weren't much. Not by these days, but I mean they were they were they were enough in those days. Did he ever give you a reason? Not me. But apparently he said to my mother, you know, I'm not having a go to him. Yeah. But he didn't give a reason. Well, no, I don't think no, I don't think he gave me a reason. No, I don't think I grumbled too much, love. No, no. How did your mother feel about it? I think she probably thought he was being a bit, you know, but I don't think they quarrelled about it, like, no, no. And did you have friends at the, at the convent as well? Yeah, yes I did, but you see they didn't live near me, love, really. That was in a different, it was like living in Kalamunda and go to school, say, in Forestfield. <laughs> I mean, you know, they didn't... The only way we, we could get would be by biking to one another's places, which I did once, yes, once, you know, to, to some, sometimes. But, but it wasn't, you couldn't, you know, it was out of your district sort of thing. And sometimes I had... Um, uh, one or two home to tea. We used to go there, you know, yeah, on my mother's half day. 
that she would prepare tea then. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm. And then we'd either put them on the bus to go home or their fathers would call something, you know, you see. Mm. Did your parents have any involvement in the schools you went to? No, not that I know of. No, I don't think they ever went to see any of the teachers or anything like that, no. And where did you live when you went to Hull? We had a flat over a butcher shop. Two-storey flat it was. The, 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 the rooms over the shop, and then above that were two big attic rooms, one of which was my father and mother's bedroom, and the back one was my bedroom. Nice big airy attic rooms. Hmm. And uh, we were there for a while, then we moved into a house. Why did you move into a house? Well, because they, got, they, they built this sort of new suburb out a bit. And uh, I mean, we didn't, we thought it was a permanent thing, you see, for, you know. It was only a rented house, you we weren't buying it or anything. So we, it was quite a nice, a nice little house, and um, with a garden, mm -hmm. you know, which my father liked to have a garden. Tell me about the house. Um, it had three bedrooms, quite small, and they had the front bedroom. I had the middle bedroom, and then down two stairs there was another little bedroom. And, and then you came down the main staircase and, the, and there was the sitting room and uh, living room and behind that was the scullery with the cooking things and that and behind, just behind that there was the loo and the coal hole the coal, you know, we kept the coal and then out to the garden yeah, it's not modern, new yeah Did you take the same furniture around with you? Yes, took a lot up to Hull with us. Yeah, yes, yeah, and the piano. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yes, and and uh, yeah. My mother always gathered friends about, you know, because of, you know they got to, they soon got to know that she, you know, played she they could hear her, you know. They, so we, we made friends along the street and things like that. What sort of people did they? They were Yorkshire people, you see. Most, you know, and my mother, <laughs> she was never happy there. I mean, she was always, you know, she made a few friends that, but she was never, she was never happy away from London. My mother, she couldn't wait to get back, really. What was it about London? I don't know. Well, she was a true London. She was born in the. I don't know, but I mean, I'm a London, and I suppose you know, I've got a bit of that off onto me because but um no she couldn't couldn't really settle there not really no and what was the garden like oh just a, not too big but my my father grew some veggies yes he was quite a keen gardener my father and every time he had a bit of land he used to grow things he liked his garden mm. yeah you know veggies and few carrots and turnip and lettuces and yeah. Hmm. So we weren't well, there for long, we were only there see for eighteen months or so and then off we had to come again. Poor things, they certainly had a rough old life of it. They did. They did. But what did, how did your mother fill her days then when she was home? Uh, well I should imagine playing no. Oh no, she she kept the house fairly, and and she did the, the you know a bit of domestic. Oh yes, yeah, she did, and she cooked the meals, and she did the shopping. She was quite a, oh yes, yeah, a sort of a housewife. Oh yeah, yeah. Read a, she was a great reader, read her books, play her piano. Hmm. Did your father bring food home from work? No, no, I don't. Well, occasionally, occasionally. He didn't get a bad. He got a lot of tips, you see. He had a, a salad, but he got a lot of tips too. So was the family better off? Yes, it was really. Yes, it was. Mm. Mm. Yeah. And ha how did this show itself? Well, that my mother didn't have to work. Right. 